Hey guys, Rushy here and welcome back to another video. Welcome to a city review. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing London, the capital city of England. So if you remember, if you've watched uh, the first video I made this year, my 2022 channel update, I said I would be visiting London as part of a university organised trip for the arts and media students. So since that video, the trip has taken place, and now in this video, I'm going to review London. So this city review is going to be different than my review of Preston in terms of its layout. So I won't be reviewing the city in specific categories and rating it out of 10. Instead, I'm just going to list things I like about London, things I don't like about London, my general observations of the city, and give a few top tips and advice about visiting the city for anyone who's thinking about visiting London, especially people who are thinking about visiting for the first time. Okay, so I visited London for the first time back in January this year, 2022. I went as part of a university organised trip. We stayed for four days and we stayed at the Royal National Hotel in Russell Square. So throughout the trip I spent with students and tutors, we all visited a museum and then from that point on I mainly decided to visit tourist attractions and uh, go shopping. Unfortunately I didn't end up buying anything, I couldn't really find what I was looking for and everything was basically too expensive anyway. But I really enjoyed the trip and I definitely want to visit London again at some point in the future. So now I'm going to list things I like about London uh, from my observations. So from my um, brief few days spent in London, I can honestly say I felt very safe. And um, I felt so safe, in fact, that after my first day, I decided to spend the next three days travelling alone. And I didn't encounter any safety issues. One thing I really like about London is how diverse and international the population is. It's very tourist friendly and there's loads of fellow tourists and locals and everyone blends in. People from all walks of life um, are in London. So I felt, even though I was a complete stranger to the city, I felt very at home and very welcomed and I didn't feel like I stood out at all. One of the things I like the most about London is how many tourist attractions there are. There are loads of different tourist attractions, especially in the South Bank region. I visited uh, the Houses of Parliament, Big Ben, uh, the London Eye, Buckingham Palace, the Tate Modern Art Museum, and there are probably loads of other tourist attractions that I didn't get time to visit during my stay. So I really think there is something there for everyone to see. There are also loads of shops available. There's uh, a few different uh, shopping centres throughout the city. And there's um, loads of variety of shops, uh, low end market stalls and high end expensive shops as well. There's also plenty of choice of places to eat and loads of restaurants available, fast food places, takeaway places and high-end cafes and restaurants. One thing I noticed about the city when I was walking through the city centre was how clean it was. Um, there wasn't really any litter on the pavement and the roads looked really clean. And in the evening time, I saw a road sweeper driving through the city streets and clean the city streets. So that explains why the streets are so clean. So the city centre is regularly cleaned and looks really clean and at market. And I'd say it's probably one of the cleanest city centres in the UK. So whilst I was in London, I spent most of my time either walking or using public transport, the London Tube. I didn't uh, use a taxi or a bus whilst I was there. But another thing I noticed was how wide the pavements are. So there's plenty of room to walk, especially because London is a very highly populated city. So it's very busy, but it's, it's accommodated for that. 
Another thing I really liked was how the pedestrian crossings are timed. So when you're waiting to cross at a pedestrian crossing, you have the red man, which means you have to stop. And when the green man shows, that means you can cross. But there's a timer on the right hand side, which shows how long you have to cross, which I find really useful and handy. And I haven't seen that anywhere else in the UK. I think those crossings should be put in place all throughout the UK, but I'm glad they are in London, at least. And speaking of the road network, um, there I noticed there are some roads, especially in the city centre, that are specifically dedicated to cyclists, as well as really large cycle areas. So it's a very cycle-friendly city. And in terms of public transport, there are loads of taxis. And I noticed buses running very regular and tube trains running very regular as well, maybe once every four minutes or less, which is very handy. So those are the main um, good points about London that I noticed whilst I was there. There are probably other things as well, but um, not none that I can think of offhand from my short stay. So now moving on to the things I noticed about London, the things about London that I didn't like. So I've done some research and I found out the London metro area population is currently 9,541,000 people. That's a lot. And it doesn't surprise me because when I was there, I noticed the city was very busy. There was lots of people all throughout the city centre. I wouldn't say it was overcrowded when walking through the city, but it was overcrowded on the buses I noticed and on the tube trains as well. Expect a lot of overcrowding in the public transport area specifically, not so much when walking through the city but expect it to be very busy and very loud and noisy. Also the tr public transport is quite expensive. Taxis I haven't used one but that was because I thought it'd be too expensive for the buses. I, I didn't use a bus but I'm sure they are quite more expensive than in other areas of the UK and I used the London Tube and that was very expensive. And in terms of price, I think most things are more expensive in London than they are in other parts of the UK. For example, food and drink, especially alcohol at pubs. And in terms of shops, there's loads of variety of shops, but there's more high-end shops in London which have higher prices as well. So it is a very expensive city to live in and to visit. Also, I noticed the pollution levels are quite high. They are getting lower. They aren't anywhere near as bad as they used to be, thanks to the ultra low emission zone. But as I was walking through the city centre, I could smell pollution from some of the vehicles. And that's why I decided to wear a face mask as I was walking through the city, not only just protect myself from COVID-19, but also reduce the intake of pollution. So it's definitely getting better, but it's still an issue. One thing that took me by surprise was how large the city centre is. I expected it to be very busy, but I didn't expect it to be as large as it was. And it took quite a long time to cover by walking, hence why I use the tube quite often. But if you want to walk throughout the city centre, prepare to walk for a long journey to get to your destination. I ended up doing quite a lot of walking every day. I was um, exploring the tourist attractions and by the time I got back to my hotel, I was absolutely knackered from walking so long. Another thing to point out about London, but it's also the case in basically the rest of the UK, is how bad the weather is. So if you're from Britain, you'll expect this, but if you're from another part of the world, expect the weather to be quite dismal, really, especially during winter periods. It can be quite cold. Uh, it rained a couple of times during my four day stay. And yeah, the weather isn't always very nice, although it was sunny on one day whilst I was there. But um, the weather in the UK in general is quite unpredictable and usually quite dismal. As I mentioned earlier, um, the city has a very high population and there's lots of overcrowding on public transport, but also um, there's lots of vehicle traffic. So if you're thinking about driving through London, expect to be caught in traffic jams quite often. And it's also going to be quite expensive as well, especially if you're driving through the ultra low emission zone. If your vehicle doesn't comply with the emission zone, you will be charged. 
to drive through the zone and you have to pay congestion charge as well so I wouldn't really recommend driving through the city. And one final thing to mention is there is a large homeless community in the city centre which you know isn't too bad you know I don't mind you know homeless people you know I do feel sorry for people who are homeless and I think they do have a right to be in London definitely but there's quite a few beggars and one night I went to a local supermarket late in the evening for some snacks and there was a homeless guy outside the supermarket and he was quite stern in asking for money. He wasn't aggressive but he was very persistent in asking for money. Luckily I had some spare change which I didn't mind giving to him. But if you're visiting the city centre and walking through the city centre, expect some homeless people or beggars to come up to you and ask for money which I can understand isn't the nicest of experience, especially if you haven't got any money to give to these people. So now I've listed the good things and the bad things, uh, in my opinion, about London. I'm now going to move on and list my general observations of the city whilst I was there. So one thing I noticed that I haven't really noticed anywhere else in the UK is a large emergency service presence in London. So throughout my four day stay, I seen plenty of police vehicles, ambulances, and a couple of fire trucks as well. Some were using sirens responding to emergencies, but others were just parked up. Another thing I noticed um, when walking through the city centre was that most of the buildings in the area were quite old, well maintained, and they were very large, so very tall, very wide. And they were modern buildings as well, but they were very tall and very wide as well. So most of the buildings in the city centre are quite large. Another system I noticed, which I haven't seen anywhere else in the UK, is when using public transport, specifically the London Tube, when using the escalators on the Tube, if you want to queue or not walk up and down the escalators while you're on them, they say you have to wait on the right-hand side and let people who want to walk past pass you on the left hand side and they say uh, Londoners if you don't do this Londoners won't be very happy. One thing I noticed which I um, haven't really noticed anywhere else I think it's going to become more common in the future was the amount of electric vehicles in the city centre of London. I've seen more electric cars in London city centre than I've seen anywhere else and I think that is partly due to the low emission zone and how wealthy some residents of London are because as we know, electric cars are relatively expensive. I also noticed uh, quite a few supercars and really expensive vehicles in the city whilst I was there as well. So it's a good place for classic car and supercar spotters. And now finally moving on to the top tips I have and advice I have for people who want to visit London, especially those who haven't visited London before and plan on visiting for the first time. So I recommend before you travel, conduct research on London before you visit. So that could mean watching videos like my video and other videos on YouTube um, about London. Study a map of London before you visit. Study the London Tube underground map as well. One thing I wish I'd done before I visited London was learn more about the public transport, especially the bus network and using taxis as well. Also, something I didn't invest in, which I think I should have, was bought or um, leased a Oyster card. It's not essential, but perhaps think about um, buying or leasing an Oyster card. As I said earlier, London is a very expensive city, so prepare to spend quite a lot of money during your stay, more than you would spend in other areas of the UK. So definitely bring some spending money with you. Another thing I recommend is that you plan where you want to visit in London before you actually go so that you can plan your journeys and your days and what you do each day whilst you're in London because chances are you won't be able to afford to spend a lot of time in London like I could only afford to spend four days so make sure you plan ahead so you can make the most out of each day whilst you're there. One thing you need to do is bring suitable clothing for bad weather so coats uh, occasional good weather as well so t-shirts and shorts maybe just in case and also wear walking shoes because you're going to be doing a lot of walking 
one thing I recommend, especially if you plan on visiting London but you don't live in the UK, is that you learn British laws and British etiquette uh, before you arrive, just so you're more familiar with London when you do arrive and how to conduct yourself whilst you're in the city. I know there's plenty of YouTube videos online um, from other YouTubers uh, covering this topic, so feel free to check them out after you watch this video. And like I said earlier, I felt confident travelling alone, um, exploring the city. But if you're travelling with someone and you want to um, embark and go somewhere alone, let them know where you are going. Or if you are visiting the city alone, remember to keep in contact with friends or family or whoever you keep in contact with. Um, arrange for how often you want to keep in contact with them and at what time just so you can let um, your people know that you are safe and if anything bad does happen they will know if you don't contact them so I always keep in contact with whoever you keep in contact with so that concludes this video guys uh, in terms of listing things I like about London things I don't like about London general observations of the city and my top tips and advice for people thinking about visiting London. I definitely enjoyed my four day stay and I hope to visit London again at some point and I definitely recommend that you visit the city. Thanks so much for watching guys, I really enjoyed making this city review. I've definitely got more content planned and I hope to stick to my monthly schedule throughout the year. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next month in my next video.